this video, we will be repairing this copy of Pokemon Ruby in a way that most would consider unnecessary, pointless, overkill, and just a complete waste of time. But, it wouldn't be a Solder King video if all that wasn't true. Let's get started. The screw is pretty rusty, so it's safe to assume that this has seen some water damage. I know this won't fix it, but let's try cleaning the contacts just to rule that out. Just as I figured, but it was worth a shot. Let's go ahead and remove all the components to see what damage we're working with. After stripping the PCB, we are left with a lot of darkened vias, which usually means that the via is probably broken. Since there are a lot of broken vias, I'm just going to cut to the chase and use sandpaper to remove the solder mask in order to expose some copper that we can solder to. I repair vias by threading 30 gauge wire through them to reconnect the damage trace on both sides of the PCB. With all the damaged vias repaired, we can now add the components back on and finish soldering the 30 gauge wire to complete the broken traces. And after all that, the game still doesn't boot, so let's try again.
had to get a little weird here and use a sponge to hold the PCB while I stabbed 30 gauge wire through almost every single via on it. The via pads will now act as solder pads for the 30 gauge wire. With all the vias stuffed, we can now flip over the PCB, and oh my god, this might have been a mistake. All of the broken connections on the back side of the PCB can now be repaired by bending the wire where it makes sense and soldering it into place. Hopefully this is the last time soldering all the components back on. You may be wondering why I didn't show the process of soldering the flash chip back on, and that's because it was more of a challenge than I thought it would be. Um, I was kind of stuck with how to put it back on. The issue was that these solder joints right here that were created by the jumper wires added a bit more height to the package, as it did with everything else, uh, such as this chip right here and what would be this chip right here for the real-time clock. It added more height to the package and the leads had to be bent in a way to accommodate that height to allow for a solder joint. However, with the flash chip, it was too much height to allow the leads to bend and still solder on both sides. So I had to get really creative with how to put this chip back on and it took it took a few tries to land on something and I didn't want to record the process because I didn't know which part would be used, but I did take pictures along the way and this is what I came up with. 
I ended up soldering 30 gauge wire to every pad that would be used and then I epoxied that 30 gauge wire like this to give it a lot of strain relief to ensure that it will not move. The issue with this is if I didn't add the epoxy when I went to solder the 30 gauge wire to the chip it would have flown and that contact right here would have been lifted. Uh, I tried it without the epoxy and I noticed that every time I tried to solder it the pad right here would lift and it just wouldn't maintain a good contact so the epoxy was very necessary and I made sure that everything was 100% correct before I proceeded. Uh, so after the epoxy cured I put the chip back on. I had to solder this side on at an angle and you can see the height difference here like it is really elevated on this side and there was no way to accommodate that uh, with both both sides being you know soldered to the pads directly. I, I tried bending the leads it just did not work i didn't want to bend them so much that they would break because in a sense all these components on this board are still salvageable and can be put on a new board in the future if i decide to uh, but anyways i soldered the one side on at an angle as you can see here and i left this side floating up at a severe angle so if we look at this picture, this is where all the connections were made. That 30 gauge wire was bent up and then soldered to each pin directly, uh, with the exception of this pad right here and this one over here. I think two of them were done um, without being underneath the chip. Uh, but this was like the hardest part of this repair is just making sure all of these connections are solid because uh, it really hung up everything and again you can see the severe angle at how high this chip is and I did not expect it I did not expect these little solder joints to add that much height to it but it did and this was my solution and I am sorry I couldn't record the process but I figured pictures were good enough to make up for that anyways let's continue with the repair and see if we can get this thing working Before I end the video, I just wanted to show you guys the final product one more time. I'm really proud of it. It looks ridiculous and I love it. I wanted to show it against what the normal PCB should look like. So this is a normal untouched copy of Pokemon Ruby. Looks brand new kind of. There are some scuffs and stuff. And this is the damaged repaired Solder King version of Pokemon Ruby. It looks amazing. I love it. All the solder mask is completely gone, all the silk screen is completely gone, it's just bare copper for the most part, and a bunch of fixed vias. So let's go ahead and throw it in a case, and play it one last time. Now this is the original case for it, a uh, pretty decent looking case, I'm not going to put it in this one, I'm going to put it in this chewed up one, which I have right here, it's got some bite marks in the back, literally chewed up and a bunch of plastic missing on the front. Don't know why. But my goal is to get a clear case for this and keep it as like um, like a desk ornament or something. Just something for fun to hang around. I don't have a screw for it either, so we're just gonna be a little, little janky here. There we go. So it looks like someone has eight hours invested into this game and probably ran it through a washer and dryer. And that's probably what destroyed all those vias. But it is working now. It's fully functional, rest restored to its uh, normal glory. 
And uh, yeah, that just goes to show that nothing is completely broken, and if you have enough time and you're a little bit insane, you might attempt a repair like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this repair. If you do, go ahead and subscribe if you want, or don't, uh, and I will see you next time. Thank you again for watching.